Hi, this is Joel from Lindit. I'm going to show you some possibilities for optimizing D over D performance today. We are working on a cluster kindly provided by Intel as part of their data center builders program. These are two socket systems with hyperthreading enabled. The first column here corresponds to the first socket, the second column to the other socket, and the third and fourth columns are the CPUs that are available through hyperthreading. So CPU 0 and 56 are actually the same physical core, and CPU 28 and 84 are the same core too. We've used Linstore to set up two D over D resources. On this node here, they are diskless. The first one has one peer with a backing disk, and the other one has three peers. Let's start with a random read test. Performance is OK, we've got 140,000 IOPS, but that's because we're working with good hardware. Let's see if we can improve it. Let's start by trying to use a higher MTU. This is also called enabling jumbo frames. Well, that helped. Now we have almost 190,000 IOPS. Another thing we can try is to adjust the CPU binding. By default, DRBD picks a CPU for each resource and binds its threads there. This is a reasonable strategy that minimizes CPU usage while delivering decent performance. But sometimes you can achieve higher performance with some more advanced optimization. For a start, let's make sure our application stays where we want it so that the performance is stable. Now let's try moving the threads around. Hey, performance just got better. It's now almost 210,000 IOPS. What just happened? It turns out that our network interface is local to the second socket. We could have checked this by looking in SysFS. By placing DRBD on the appropriate NUMA node, we improved performance noticeably. Now let's look at the resource with three peers, and for variety, we'll do a write test. This means that all writes are being synchronously replicated to all three disks. We've set up a small script to make it more convenient to experiment with various configurations. We've placed the resource on the appropriate NUMA node as before. Now that we have multiple peers, let's spread the threads over multiple CPUs. This is DRBD10 we're using here. It responds better to this configuration than DRBD9 does. Let's just check what's going on on our peers. It looks a bit tied up, so let's spread the threads out here too. Another approach we might be able to take is to modify the application to produce data on multiple threads. And let's place those threads on separate cores. Now we're hitting the limits of our 25 gigabit ethernet link, which we can observe by seeing that the send buffers are filling up on the sending side but the receivers aren't really full on the receiving side. Let's just see what read performance we get with DFOD in this configuration. Well, almost 500,000 IOPS. With off-the-shelf hardware and open source software, that's not bad. Actually, it gets even better. When we're reading, we only really need to put the sender on one CPU. So let's try that. Cool, now we're over 500,000 IOPS, half a million reads per second, on a single DRBD volume. Finally, let's see what happens when we scale up and use the entire cluster. 14.9 million IOPS, you don't see that every day. There are many other parameters that can be optimised too, from interrupt affinities to network device coalescing options. So contact Limbit for assistance tuning your cluster for maximal performance.